Hi guys, this is chapter one, part two of Brain Facts. This section is all about neural networks, brain waves, and neural circuits. My name is Preeti Nalura. So let's begin. Nerve tracts are bundles of nerve fibers of long distance neurons. Examples of nerve tracts include the corpus callosum, which connects the left and right hemispheres of the brain, and the small anterior commissure, which connects the left and right temporal lobes. A neural network is a group of nerve tracts connecting regions in the brain. Let's just take an example. You say you're watching TV. The photoreceptors in your eyes convert the wavelengths of the light into electrical signals, which then travel through your optic nerve into your thalamus onto your primary visual cortex. From there, the electrical signals go into two streams. One, the temporal lobe for recognizing objects, and two, the parietal lobe to detect spatial location. That's an example of a neural network because it connects various regions of the brain. Spinal tracts are neuron chains that pass signals through the brainstem and the spinal cord. Signals going up a spinal tract are from sensory receptors to the thalamus to parts of the cortex. Signals going down a spinal tract are from brain regions involved in movement to the medulla, to the spinal cord, to the muscles. Other neural networks provide feedback that integrates sensory and motor information. An example of this would be a loop between the basal ganglia and parts of the cortex involved in movement to excite or inhibit movement. Moving on, loops connecting the brainstem and the cerebellum influence the timing and strength of motor signals. Some of these include tracts from the cerebral cortex that allow environmental and social influence on movements. Loops connecting to the hippocampus with the pathways of the sensory cortex help figure out whether the environment a person is in is familiar. Networks linking the hippocampus to the thalamus and hypothalamus allow memory influence on conscious behavior and unconscious physiological responses. Reflex loops are circuits that cause action before thoughts. Actions in reflex loops are controlled by the spinal cord or subcortical regions of the brain, and they never reach the cortex, where thoughts occur. Back to the watching TV example of neural networks. Signals are sent back to the thalamus from the cortex to integrate this information with other sensory information. This two-way circuit between the thalamus and parts of the cortex is at the lamellar cortical loop. The picture on the left shows what EEG results look like, and the picture on the right shows what an EEG looks like. There are four types of brain waves, alpha, beta, theta, and delta. Alpha and beta waves occur when you're awake, and theta and delta waves occur when you're asleep. The frequencies are listed on the slide. 1 hertz is 1 cycle per second, and it's a measure of frequency. Alpha waves originate in the parietal and occipital lobes of the brain when the person is relaxing and their eyes are closed. Beta waves originate in the frontal and parietal lobes when processing sensory input or concentrating. Delta waves often happen during deep sleep. Alpha and delta waves are stronger than theta and beta waves. Stronger as in they have higher amplitude. These pictures show the four types of brain waves. Neural circuits are interconnected neurons that convert entering signals into output that can be sent to other parts of the brain. They are arranged in distinct layers. They are arranged in columns. Each column is a single chain, and each chain has connections to layers above and below. As a result, a column's final output can be influenced by other nearby circuits. Because a neuron sums up all received signals before creating its own, the strength of neighboring circuit signals can dynamically change a neuron's response. This organization may help the brain react flexibly. This shows all of the vocabulary from this video. Bye, guys!